knowledge and in this webinar I will provide you with the instructions on how to correctly fill in section 5 of the control checklist. This information should be kept in mind by the national controllers when documenting the checks on the compliance with procurement rules. It is to be emphasized that the filled in control documents are checked by the MAJS and section 5 is the cause of many requests for clarification. Therefore, in order to as much as possible avoid clarifications related to section 5 of the control checklist, it is important that it is filled in according to the instructions. To begin with, it is important to note that the compliance with procurement rules for the contracts of works, supplies and services from economic operators is always to be confirmed by the national controllers and duly documented in the control checklist section 5. The relevant part of section 5a, 5b, 5c or 5d is to be filled in depending on the contracted amount excluding VAT and according to the legal status of the beneficiary. For further information, please see chapter C.1, 5.1 of the implementation manual. It is to be emphasized that if required, sections 5b, 5c and 5d are to be duplicated and filled in for each contract. The button at procurement is to be used. In case the procurement procedure has already been checked in previous reporting periods, either a comment is to be included in the comment box under the relevant section that the public procurement has been done and checked in previous periods, or the relevant section is to be filled in again. However, always in case of a change in the contract, the relevant section is to be filled in again. Any deductions necessary following an infringement of procurement rules are to be also reported under the respective budget lines in the checklist. And now, let's discuss all parts of Section 5 separately. Section 5a refers to contracting amounts below 5,000 euro excluding VAT, unless the threshold set by the applicable national rules is stricter. This section is to be filled in once for all the contracts reported in the respective reporting period and is applicable to all types of beneficiaries irrespective of their legal status. If needed, respective comments are to be provided in the comment box. The next section 5b is to be filled in for contracting amounts between 5,000 euro excluding VAT and the threshold set by the applicable EU or national rules. Therefore, if for example the national threshold is at 4,000 euro, then this section is not to be filled in but the section 5c or 5D has to be filled in. This section is to be duplicated and filled in for each contract and is applicable to all types of beneficiaries irrespective of their legal status. It is to be noted by the national controllers that some questions in this section are to be filled in by providing respective answers and not only selecting yes, no or not applicable. This is so for the following questions. Title of the procurement, if applicable, name of purchased service, work or supply, name of contractor and total amount as per contract excluding VAT. With regard to the total amount as per contract excluding VAT, we would like to point out that here the national controller should indicate the total amount of the contract and not the amount of the invoice being reported. If needed, respective comments are to be provided also in the comment box. This is, for example, applicable to the case when procurement procedure has already been checked in previous reporting periods and the relevant section is not filled in again and just a comment is included. With regard to contracting amounts above the threshold set by the applicable EU or national rules, the selection of the relevant section depends on the legal status of the beneficiary as set in the approved application form. First, the national controller is to verify and tick if the beneficiary falls or does not fall under the scope of application of public procurement laws. Depending on this verification, either section 5C or 5D is to be filled in. Section 5C is to be filled in for contracting amounts above the threshold set by the applicable EU or national rules. This section is to be duplicated and filled in for each contract and it is applicable for beneficiaries falling under the scope of application of the pro public procurement laws. Similar as in the previous section, also here the national controllers are to remember that some questions in this section are to be filled in by ticking the relevant answer, yes, no, or not applicable, 
but for the other, the relevant information is to be given. This is for the following questions. Title of the procurement, name of the contractor, total amount as per contract, excluding VAT, procurement procedure chosen, and channels means chosen for publication. As already mentioned for previous section, with regard to the total amount as per contract, excluding VAT, we would like to point out that here the national controller should indicate the total amount of the contract and not the amount of the invoice being reported. If needed, respective comments are to be provided also in the comment box. This is, for example, applicable to the case when public procurement procedure has already been checked in previous reporting periods and the relevant section is not filled in again and just a comment is included. And the last, section 5D, refers to contracting amounts above the threshold set by the applicable EU or national rules. This section is also to be duplicated and filled in for each contract. However, it is only applicable for beneficiaries not falling under the scope of application of the public procurement laws. As already pointed out in previous sections, also here the national controllers are to remember that some questions in the, this section are to be filled in by ticking the relevant answer, yes, no, or not applicable, but for the other, the relevant information is to be given. This is for the following questions. Title of the procurement, name of contractor, total amount as per contract, excluding VAT, procurement procedure chosen, and channels means chosen for publication. As already mentioned for previous sections, with regard to the total amount as per contract, excluding VAT, we would like to point out that here the national controller should indicate the total amount of the contract and not the amount of the invoice being reported. And of course, if needed, respective comments are to be provided also in the comment box. This is, for example, applicable to the case when procurement procedure has already been checked in previous reporting periods and the relevant section is not filled in again and just a comment is included. At the end of this webinar, we would like to remind you about the requirement of informing the JS in case of contracts above the EU thresholds. This information is to be provided by the national controller prior to certification of costs. We hope that you find the presented information helpful in performing your checks. Thank you for your attention.